going on guys welcome back to another video so in this one we're going to be talking a little bit about amc what it's looking like on the technicals right now now and if you've been listening and paying any attention to the videos that i posted over the last couple of days you would have known that we've been talking about the potential for another pullback down to a very key level um we outline this very specifically and that's exactly what we're going to be looking at um in this video here when we talk about the technicals now we do have cpi data coming out tomorrow so there could be some more volatility coming in the market we're gonna have to wait and see what happens there but overall the chart of amc right now is still looking pretty good but there are a couple of things that we do have to kind of focus in on to really confirm if this is going to be a retest or if we are going to be selling back off even lower. Now, in addition, we're also going to be talking a little bit about the Ortex data. And there's also a hedge fund that's down about 63% right now. Now, when we talk about this fund, I'm going to do my best to just keep a straight face. It's really hard, though, because of what they blame uh, their losses on. So make sure you guys stick until the end of the video for that one. And again, if you guys do enjoy the information and analysis that I provide for you in this video, make sure you go down and hit that like button. It costs you nothing to do it, but it really helps us out a whole lot in getting this information out to as many people who do want to learn. And again, if you guys do want to see more videos like this, make sure you click that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell so you're notified every time I post a new video so when we're coming over to the chart here again 1348 the most profitable EMA crossover strategy is gonna paint a really solid picture for us on this four hour time frame uh, time frame on where most likely AMC or any stock in the market is going to go over a one to two week period now remember we had this four hour cross up we had the rsi above 50 we had the macd showing green on the histogram we had the shaft trend cycle signaling by then we had earnings we ripped back up again <gasps> but now we're coming down to this 13 ema exactly what we were saying was most likely going to happen before the potential for the next leg up now again we do have cpi data coming out tomorrow so we are going to kind of have to wait and see okay is the market really going to be affected by this inflation report that comes out and is this going to drag amc down now it's possible that it does and again the next level that we'd be kind of looking at here uh would be down here at 1838 that support level uh that previous resistance level that we have seen we also have that 48 ema on this four hour time frame as well now that's not to scare you i'm just being realistic with the expectations of what we're seeing on the chart right now that's kind of to the downside. If we kind of see the market kind of relax a little bit, we easily could see a nice strong bounce off of this 13 EMA on the four hour time frame. And again, like we've been kind of thinking about, the time period before uh, this stock dividend gets paid out should be a little bit of a bullish period for AMC as people start to buy in more in the hopes of getting, well, more shares and then they get more of the dividend. But again, guys, if you want to be able to do this on every single stock in the market, come hang out with us in the live streams, get access to the full learning curriculum and Pythagoras and Invictus when they are going to be released in the very, very near future. You guys have seen the success of those. You've seen the success of all of our members in the live chats. Take control of it. Put the power of essentially compound interest on your side um, and really take everything into your own hands. So if you guys are interested in that, make sure you check out that link down below. Um, yeah, let's, let's get after it, man. I mean, you guys have been doing awesome. It's awesome to see the Gains channel every single day. And again, if you guys are interested, we'd love to have you. So kind of moving forward a little bit here with AMC and kind of taking a look at the Ortex data here. Again, like we say in every single video, Ortex is not going to be the determining factor of how heavily a stock is shorted at any given time. But it does give us a little bit of a bare baseline minimum uh, of what we're looking at, at in terms of shorting in the overall market. So we've got 18.59% estimated short interest, 100 131.89 million shares on loan. So that's kind of what we're looking at across the board here on the short interest data. The only conclusion that you can really draw from this and something that I've been saying a lot recently is it's still shorted. Nothing's really changed in any significant way. The stock is still very aggressively shorted. Um, now, before we kind of talk about this one hedge fund that's down very significantly, I do also want to talk about the overall performance of a lot of these funds uh, over the last few months. When we come over to this article right here by Institutional Investor, with equity markets recovering sharply in July after the worst calendar year first half in more than 50 years, hedge funds also saw gains. According to uh, hedge fund research data, equity hedge funds which use long short strategies, meaning that they 
they are playing the market up, playing the market down. Hedging um, posted solid numbers in July. HFR's invest uh, investable HFRI 500 equity hedge index increased by about 3.25% and its HFRI equity hedge total index gained about 2.9%. But the S&P during the same time period was up about 9.1%. So again, these funds still aren't able to beat the market. You know, it is a Pythagoras, our algorithm that we have here, which is going to be awesome for retail investors to have access to. But I do want to talk about Tiger Global. Now, we've seen the situation with Bill Huang uh, play out in the past, another one of these Tiger Cubs. And I do want to take a look at uh, Tiger Global in this video here. Now, I got I got to kind of relax a little bit. It's really hard not to laugh about what they blame for their losses. And if you click over to this article here, Tiger Global blames inflation after a 50% drop in flagship hedge fund. How stupid do you have to be to not realize that, oh, the Fed has printed an absolutely enormous amount of money. And then you're not going to reposition your fund worth billions of dollars due to the prospects of inflation guaranteed to be coming with all this new money circulating around. And then you are going to go out and essentially say that you're blaming inflation on the decrease of your portfolio. These people are supposed to be the smartest in the room uh, in really being able to read markets and, and basically positioning their clients accordingly. If I was a super high net worth individual and I had any knowledge of the market, anything in economics, and I saw the Chase Coleman come out and say, yeah, we lost 50%. And then we come over here, uh, their actual th uh, fund, the uh, long only fund, f the firm manages ended the second quarter down 63.6%. Uh, this was just their flagship fund or their biggest fund was down 50%. If I was one of these high net worth individuals and I saw this, I would just be like, you're completely inept. You have no idea what you're talking about or what you're doing. If you can't see that, okay, the Fed's going to be increasing rates. We are going to have inflation. We're coming into a recession and you're not going to position your client's money accordingly it makes these people look like absolute morons this isn't even like a mistake that they've made it just makes them look really 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 stupid so again uh, a couple of these funds and and what this really goes towards kind of showing us is that the smart money is really not all that smart every single person if you if you've been following along over the last year and a half you know that when there's more money in circulation, increases the supply, decreases the value of the dollar, it leads to inflation. This is very, very basic economics. Smart money isn't all that smart. Now, to kind of wrap up this video here, I do kind of want to take a little bit of a look at AMC's option chain uh, going into the end of this week. And when we take a look at this right here, we've got about 45,000 call contracts in the money. We've got 18,000 puts. So it is rebalancing a little bit. We have more puts in the money now than we did previously. But again, you're still overbalanced or overweight on what you're seeing on calls in the money. So if the market makers are going to be hedging, they're going to be buying more than they are shorting. So guys, that's kind of going to wrap up this video uh, for this evening. If you did enjoy the information and analysis that I provided for you in this video, make sure you go down and hit that like button. It costs you nothing to do it but it really helps us out a whole lot in getting this information out to as many people who want to learn if you guys want to see more videos like this too make sure you guys hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell so you're notified every time i post a new video so that's going to wrap it up for this one guys other than that peace